Oh, well, one of the uh, things that I get a lot of questions about from Hopkinton residents is clean energy and what we're doing at the State House to really promote um, better, cleaner sources of energy. And there are a number of pieces of legislation now that are, I hope will move forward this session. Uh, I sit on the Committee on Telecommunications, Utilities and Energy, so we have the first cut at this legislation, if you will, and uh, a couple of pieces of legislation that would require more uh, state require utilities to purchase more renewable energy, which would be great and kind of drive more supply. Uh, and then there's another piece of legislation around rolling back a fee, which Eversource just uh, proposed that was approved by the state for residential solar. So any residential solar customers would be paying more for using the, the grid. And uh, I think that's really a step backwards for pr promoting renewable energy. So we're really fighting to, to roll that back. Transportation, uh, commuter rail is a big conversation. Uh, commuter rail is great for convenience, it's really important for commuters here in town, and it's also a great environmental initiative just to get people out of their cars and into public transit. But unfortunately, as those who take commuter rail uh, here in the Western Framingham line knows, it's, it, you know, reliability needs some work. We just need more investments. It's a very old system. We need more service, and we need more on-time service. And we've been working on that, uh, coordinating with the State Department of Transportation, which just commissioned a vision study, a statewide vision study, to really say what's the future of commuter rail, um, you know, and what are the upgrades that we need to make that would make this really a 21st, 22nd century system, like those in Europe, for example. So we are fighting as a Metro West legislative delegation to have legislative input on that. I think you know you really can't have an effective vision for commuter rail without having the voice of the consumer and the voice of the rider in that process. And I think uh, legislators are really a very effective way to do that. So we're we're going to be pushing to make sure that the needs of, of Hopkinton residents and all the residents along the Worcester Framingham line are met through this process. John came to me with a great story, that an interaction that he'd had with a, a police officer where, that was directing him to do one thing and he thought he was directing him to do another. And it led to a little uh, discomfort and a little interaction between he and the, and the police officer. And so he came to me with this idea that all officers directing traffic should be wearing white gloves, which would make their hands and their hand motions and signals much more obvious and visible to drivers. And we talked about it a little bit, and I encouraged Ron to go down and talk to Chief Lee about it. And after some conversation, I decided to file something. So we filed a bill that I call the White Gloves Bill. Ron and I, Ron is a co-sponsor of the bill with me. And what it says is that it would um, allow cities and towns to adopt a provision that would require white gloves for traffic direction. And Ron came into the State House about a year ago, I guess, and testified before the committee, did a great job. And as we always say at the State House, tell your story because it's those local stories that are always the most compelling ones. And he did a fantastic job. So we're hoping it didn't get reported favorably out of committee, but we're going to go back at it again next year and just keep the conversation going. I will say that after we filed it, that I've been getting a lot of comments from people thinking, you know, I never thought about that before, but he's absolutely right. We really should take another look at this.